Okay, so we are, uh, one of the things that uh, Odie does not like, he likes the kennel, well, I don't want to say he likes the kennel, but he'll go in the kennel no problem when he's here with his guardians. But when they close the door, he freaks out. Now, I'm not going to close the door for the demonstration of this video. It would be good footage, but it wouldn't be good for him healthily, so we're not going to do it. What I'm going to do is, is show you a technique that I have developed to help you help the dog learn to associate the positivity in the kennel. The first thing we're going to do is what I just got done showing off camera, how we're going to introduce uh, or create a positive association, the same way we did here for the dog bed. So we toss a treat. As soon as the dog gets it, we say the command word, and then we reward the dog. I'm going to move this out of the way temporarily. So what I'm going to do, uh, for a lot of dogs, and this is, they say for humans, one of the hardest things about being in jail, never been, so, uh, is when you hear the door close and you know you're there for the night. So for a lot of dogs, being in the kennel represents two things. Number one, I'm restrained. Number two, my humans are leaving me. So now that there's too much for me to deal with. So what we want him to do is practice being in the kennel when we tell him he has to be in the kennel. And if you get alerts or whatever, you can just ignore him on my phone. Um, uh, that he has to stay in there until we give him permission to exit. So the way I do this is first I throw, I make sure I throw treats in so that he goes in and out like he is now without any hesitation. If your dog hesitates, keep throwing the treats in. Now if your dog won't go in the kennel because you're right here, you've probably forced your dog in the kennel and shoved him in and closed, shoved the door shut. So you might have to actually sit several feet away and toss the treat into the kennel where the dog feels like you're not going to trap him. So once the dog is going into the kennel can, uh, can, without any hesitation like Odie is, we're going to do this. So I'm going to do it quietly so he doesn't hear that I'm sneaking up on him. So now uh, your kennel is plastic. I prefer a wire kennel so I can see from the top. So I'm going to re rely on Larry to help me give me a yes when you see him sit down. I just want you to shake your head yes. So he's in there. You can see he's, he's up in the front of the kennel. He wants to exit. So I'm going to take a small step. I'm going to try to take a small step back. My way of saying no is to rush forward immediately. So normally he, he's okay going in the kennel when he can go in and, and come and go as he pleases. This is different. I'm asking to stay in there. But what I'm doing is I'm not closing the door. So now he's only dealing with one thing. The humans are still here, and he has to restrain himself. He has to develop self-control. Now I move another step away. Now I pause in between each step to make sure the dog can process it. If the dog starts coming forward or is moving about, I wait for the dog to be stationary before I take my step back. When I take a step back, I take a left foot, right foot, and then I stop in place and wait for the dog. Now, if you can see uh, Odie, he is breathing a little bit heavy right now. This is stressful for him because normally he can go and go to the kennel as he wants, but now he's, somebody's telling him he can't leave whenever, when he wants to. So he's lost the, the ability of free choice. Um, now, he's sniffing around, which shows, shows he's not in a shutdown, in a panic mode. Some dogs are in a panic mode. Dogs with real separation anxiety, you can leave a T-bone steak in the kennel. They won't touch it if you're gone for eight hours because they're in a panic state. So he's he is SIT. Now I missed it because this is a wire and not a wire kennel. I couldn't see it. So the second your dog sits down, you want to take a step backwards at the same time. It's called a handshake communication. It helps him understand. So when I SIT, I'm taking a less a less assertive position. I'm taking more of a passive position, and we reward him for that by moving him closer to the exit. Now we can't move him closer to the exit. But what we can do is move us away from the exit so we're not, we're not in the blocking position. What I'm waiting for him to do is to L-A-Y. Now, if I tell him to S-I-T or L-A-Y, he probably would do it. He'd follow a command, but it doesn't signify anything. When a dog L-A-Y's or S-I-T's, it's saying, I'm comfortable enough in my sitting, if he does it on his own, to, to put myself in a more vulnerable position. Because if another dog comes to attack me or somebody comes to attack me, I'm S-I-T. I have to get up before I can run away. There we go. Come. Come. Now you notice he came out slow and he had his ear, head, head low and his ears back. That was kind of a subordinate body posture and then he moved away. So as soon as he LAYs is his way of saying, I'm, I surrender. I understand I can't leave without permission. And as soon as he does that, I give him permission the first couple times. So I want him to understand that LAY is what gets you out. Now when you have a dog that has a phobia or a problem with something, the way we help them get over it is helping them practice it under a lower level of intensity or a controlled situation enough so they don't feel the pressure or the stress. So for him, he needs to practice being in here and not being able to leave when he wants while you guys are here. So you guys are gonna do the same exercise that I did and I would recommend that you do this several times a day. Not right in a row, do one in the morning, 
do one in the afternoon. I'm going to give you a schedule off camera of how you can do this. But basically, you're going to gradually ask him to stay in there for longer and longer periods of time. But we're not going to start adding the wait time until he's laying down within about 15 seconds on his own. Once we get to that point, then we're going to start adding in after he lays down, then we're going to wait 15 seconds, then we're going to call him out. Well, actually, the first time after he lays down within 15 seconds, I, I would wait maybe five seconds, call him out. Now, there's two of you that live here, so I would have both of you guys alternate, but both practice the same iteration. So as soon as he LAYs, five seconds later, we call him out, then the partner does it also for five seconds. Then you go to 15 seconds. Then you go 30, 45, one minute, and you're both doing each one of these. Down. And the idea is to gradually work him up to the point. Now, the studies that I've read show that if you can get a dog to be in here calm for two hours, anything past two hours is easy. Now, studies show that dogs will be stressed out if they're in here for longer than four hours in a stretch. Five hours is really the max. Um, so you don't want to do that because that just causes more stress. But the idea is we want to have him practice being in there, but for very short iterations and each time getting slightly longer, slightly longer, well, every other time because you guys are going to do each one together. So after a while, then he's able to stay in there and understand he can't come out unless you say, come. Now, once we've gotten to the point where we reach the two hour limit where he's in here with the door open, then we're going to repeat the whole exercise. But the difference is once we move away and once he all lies, then we're going to close it. We're not going to lock it. We're just going to close it. He's probably going to get up. When he gets up, we wait for him to lay down again. And as soon as he lays down, then we open the door and give him the recall command. Once he's doing that within 15 seconds of us closing the door, then we're going to start closing it like this and gradually adding the time. Now, eventually, because the way this room is set up, the TV is behind me, there's a nice chair right here, so the person can walk backwards and then sit down there and watch TV and still have him in their eyesight. Um, but the idea is now he's looking out through this mesh, and so he's getting used to the door being closed, even though it's not latched. And because you're here, he's comfortable. So we work up until two hours for this version. And then basically the last stage is to repeat it the same way, only this time when we close it, we actually latch it. And then we back away, and you know, but we repeat the same exact procedure for this. We just open and unlatch the door. So if you do this, it's going to take some time and practice, but eventually you get to the point where he's completely comfortable going in there and staying in there because he starts out by doing it on his own. He's the one controlling himself. The kettles are not the one controlling him. Self-control is what dogs need who are going suffering separation anxiety. Maui. Maui. There we go. All right, so that's, uh, uh, I don't know how long we're at on the video, but this is our synopsis of how we can teach the dog to stay in the kennel on his own.